finding a comfortable seated position for you today. Feel that you're rooting down through both of the sit bones and finding length up through the spine as the shoulders release down. Feel the front and back ribs lifting equally. There's this sense of space between the hips and the ribs. Feel a softening in the jaw and a gentle smile to the face. And taking a moment to breathe in the quality of compassion towards ourselves, self-love to ourselves. And with each exhalation, feel that you're letting go of anything you don't want anymore. Seeing if you can do all of that with a gentle smile. Seeing how it feels to breathe in this self-love, compassion towards yourself and becoming mindful of anything that we need to release and let go of, whether it be physical, mental, emotional. And applying this throughout the entire class to remind ourselves to love ourselves, to apply that compassion to ourselves and to, to let go of any attention, whether it be physical or mental. And do three arms, inhaling. Take a slow inhalation, top of the inhalation, hold the breath. And with control, very slowly releasing the breath. Do that two more times, inhaling. Holding at the top. And exhaling with control. Let your own rhythm and then relaxing the breath. Gently stretching out the legs. Move the legs from side to side. Good. And then when you're ready, let's come on to all fours. And you can start with cat cow. using your breath, your body. Feel that the weight through the hands is equal, the fingers are spread wide. Be mindful if you've got the tendency to lock the elbows, that you resist that locking. Feel where there's tightness in the body or in the spine.
Then you come to a neutral position and we'll start to circle the hips in one direction. And then in the other direction. And back to neutral. Walk the hands forward to one step, curl the toes under. Keep the knees bent as you lift the hips up and back, releasing the head down towards the floor. Find length through the spine with this micro bend, or maybe more than a micro bend to the knees to get that extension. Feel that you're pushing the floor away with the hands. The weight is equal through the hands. working with the breath. Feeling that you're applying self-love to your practice. Let's let gently bring the right foot forwards in between the hands, release the back knee to the floor. Lengthen through the spine, allow the hips to gently release down. Place the palms onto the floor, curl the toes under, high lunge for a moment, and then downward dog. See if you need to maintain a lift a bend to the knees while you lift the hips up and back, getting that tilt to the pelvis while pressing down through the hands, upward energy through the arms. And bring the left foot forwards, right knee to the floor. Allow the hips to gently release, lengthening the spine, looking forward. Feeling a softening to the body, anywhere that's tight, letting it gently release. Curl the toes, high lunge for a moment, so you can either have fingers or palms down. And palms down, downward dog. And here, let's start to bend one knee at a time, getting extension through the spine, drawing one heel down towards the floor at a time. And coming back to neutral, shift forwards into plank pose, bring the body into a straight line. Feel all the muscles, Engaged, hugging in, resisting the floor with the hands. And knees to the floor, mindfully coming down, chest and chin. Slide the pelvis forwards and then gently lift the head, neck, chest. No pressure on the hands. Toes can release. Gently turn the head round to the left, looking over the left shoulder if it's comfortable, and over to the right side. Back to centre, palms onto the floor, curl the toes, downward dog. Left foot forwards, back knee to the floor. Hands onto the front knee. And we'll place both hands to the side of your left leg so we can start to create a rotation. Gently twisting around to your left. Keep the hips releasing down. 
and turning the head round to the left. Make sure the front knee stays in line with the ankle, getting a stretch to the top of the right leg. Make sure the foot's not turning in or out on the back foot. Gently releasing, coming back down. Come into a high lunge. You can either be on the fingers or the palms. We're going to use raise the left arm up. Keep both shoulders away from the ears. Keep the left knee in line with the ankle. So don't sort of cheat by drawing the knee back. Try and get the thigh as parallel to the floor as you can, looking up at the hand if it's comfortable. If you've got any kind of neck condition and you want to look forwards, just look straight in front. Slowly releasing the hand down, palms to the floor, down dog. Shift forwards into plank. Knees to the floor. Slow motion. Let's come down chest and chin into cobra. And then back up onto all fours, being mindful that the shoulders don't come up too much. Okay, we want to keep them down. Then we bend down, lower down the chest, swoop forwards, cobra into a deeper cobra, then back onto all fours, bend the elbows. So we start to kind of flow, lowering the chest, scooping the pelvis forward, lifting the head, neck and chest, press on the hands, back onto all fours, bend the elbows, chest in between the hands, Lower the pelvis, lift the head, neck and chest, push back. So keep going, bending the elbows, trying to get the chest in between the hands, swooping forwards, lifting the head, and then back to neutral. Downward dog. Right foot forwards, back knee to the floor. Good. Allow the hips to gently release, hands onto the front knee. Shoulders down. Good. And we're twisting around to your right this time. So the hands come to the side of the leg and gently rotating around. Shoulders level. Knee in line with the ankle. Feeling a stretch to the top of the left thigh. Soften the breath. And gently coming back to centre. Curl the toes under, high lunge, lift the back knee. So either option, palm to the floor, fingertips to the floor. If we have the fingertips to the floor, we have to work a bit more dynamically. And raise the right arm up. Keep the knee into alignment with the ankle. Keep the back leg lifted, don't let it sag, but don't lift up too much so that then you're not working. So you have to find that balance where there isn't effort in this position. Either looking straight forwards or up towards your hand. Slowly coming down with the hand, left foot to meet the right. Relax the head down. If you need a bend to the knees, bend the knees, relax the head. Feel the entire back of the body getting a stretch. If you want to feel that you're deepening the stretch, instead of thinking about straightening the legs, feel the sitting bones gently lifting up and that'll straighten the legs a bit more. The shoulders stay soft, the head soft. Okay. 
And then very slowly, let's roll up, vertebra by vertebra, drawing the belly button in towards you. Rolling the shoulders up, back and down. Do that a few times. Relax the shoulders. And now let's raise the arms up alongside the ears, shoulder blades drawing down. Tummy's gently drawn in so the hips don't sweep forwards. Knees aren't locked, so keep the knees slightly soft if you have the tendency to push the knees right back. We want to feel an activity in the legs, creating stability. So if you were to be pushed over, if someone came to sort of push you over, you want to feel solid. Gentle back bend. Feel a sense of spaciousness through the spine. Coming back up, bring the arms out to the side. Let's swan dive forward, relaxing the hands down, relaxing the head down. We'll place the hands onto the lower shins. The knees can be slightly bent and lengthen the spine forward so you're looking at the floor slightly in front of you without the hips moving too far back. So you may feel that you need to shift the weight forward so you're more on the balls of the feet and then balance out through the heels. Keeping that extension, relax the head down. Let's place the left foot back, left knee to the floor. Release the toes on the back foot, hands onto the front knee, shoulders back in line with the hips. Now we place the hands onto the lower back and gently allow yourself to release the hips forwards and down as you start to create a little back bend. Try and draw the elbows towards one another and down. Lifting the chin, looking either forwards or up. And gently head back to centre. Release the hands back down, curl the toes, lift the back knee, high lunge. Let's feel that we're trying to bring the back foot forwards and the front foot back. So we engage the muscles in the legs. Keep that action as we raise the left arm up, opening up. Keep that hugging sensation and slowly come down and let's change hands. Keeping that activity, front leg coming, feeling that it's coming back, back leg coming forwards. And slowly lower down. Downward dog. Lift the hips high. Shift forwards into plank. And we move into side plank. So you've got different options. So we turn onto the outer edge of your right foot. And you can either have the left foot on top of the right, the left foot in front, behind you, or bend the knee and place the foot on the floor like this. We don't want the hips sagging down, so press down through the right hand, left arm can come up. So we've also got the option for those of you that want to challenge yourself a little bit more is to lift the top leg up without the bottom hip sagging down. And slowly coming out of whatever position you're in. And let's go on to the other side.
So coming onto your left side, finding your balance, and you've got the options with the feet. See what you want to do with your arm. See if you want to lift the top leg up, shoulders away from the ears, working on strength. And slowly coming down, coming into a plank position and then knees to the floor, chest and chin to the floor. Scooping the pelvis forward, lift up the head, neck and chest. So interlock the fingers behind the back, drawing open. Use the breath. Good. Place the hands back under the shoulders. Curl the toes under, lift the knees and activate the legs as we're in cobra, baby cobra. So engage the quads, engage the calves. Seeing from here, if it's a possibility to keep that engagement to the legs, push up onto the hands a little bit, draw the tummy in and push back up into downward dog with that intention. Good. Left foot forwards. Release. Is this the right leg? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, because I'm on my right knee now. So hands onto the front knee. If it is the wrong leg, just change. But I think it's right. Okay, hands onto the lower back. Gently start to create a back bend. Allow the hips to release forwards and down. Shoulders back, elbows feel that they're gently, like a nutcracker effect drawing towards each other without creeping the shoulders up. And gently. Releasing head back to center, releasing the hands back down to the floor, curl the toes under, lift the back knee, and we do this activation with the legs where you feel that the left foot's moving back, the right foot's moving forwards. And we'll raise the right arm up, looking up, keeping that activation, this training, Slowly lowering down. Now we go on to the more challenging side. And raise left arm up. So the belly and the chest comes off the thigh. Keeping that hugging, seeing if you're just cheating and wanting to sort of relax down. Keep sucking in. So you feel work. Maybe a bit of trembling. And slowly coming down. Good. Let's bring the right foot to meet the left. Relax the head down. Maybe bend one knee at a time, kind of wiggling out, releasing and relaxing the hips. Relax the head. Then we're gonna bend the knees, bring the abdomen onto the thighs. We're gonna reach the arms forwards, up alongside the ears as much as comfortable. But also here's fine, so my arms are forwards a little bit. They don't have to, don't force your shoulder joint. We're holding here. Shift the weight to your right leg. Push down through your right leg. So you're activating the right more than the left. And then shift. Shift the weight to the left. So both feet are on the floor. We're just shifting. Activation. And then back to the right. And left. And both. And push up. Gentle back bend. Stand straight. Palms together in front of the chest. Relax the hands. Take a moment with the eyes closed. 
or softened. Observe the energy moving through the body. Observe the breath. Feel that you're breathing in this quality of self-love and compassion. Letting go of any tightness, tension, physical or mental. Good. We're going to work with a, a, a balancing pose. I think we did this recently. So we're going to stand on the left leg. We're going to step the right foot back behind you on the mat. Doesn't Just resting the top of the big toe of the foot onto the floor somehow for balance. We're eventually going to lift that leg up, so there for support. I want to bring it a little micro bend into the left leg for a moment, and we're going to start to hinge forward from the hips, place the hands onto the hips, and you notice, you might notice that the, the left hip might begin to drop and the right hip might be higher. So we want to press down through the right foot, lift the right, the left hip, sorry, left foot, left hip, keep the hips level, folding forward, maybe to a right angle, maybe a little less, okay? and then seeing if you can lift the back foot off the floor here, a few inches, and see if you can keep the hips level, see if you can start to straighten up the left foot, leg, and hold. If you feel that you can fold forwards a little bit more and lift the leg a little bit more without collapsing, do so. And then slowly see if you can bring the right foot back to meet the left. So you should feel a nice activity in the left glute, buttock, hip area. And then we'll do the other side, grounding down through the right foot. Step the left foot back and just rest onto the big toe. Take time to stabilise. So we need to use the abdominal muscles to help with balance. Let's start to gently fold forwards, make sure you're not locking the right leg. So a little micro bend is good. And take time to feel that the hips are level. Press down through the right foot. Feel upward energy through the right leg. Don't allow the right hip to pop out to the side. So the weight stays equal. See if it's an option to lift the foot a few inches off the floor, trying to maintain balance to the pelvic area, sacrum. See if the right leg wants to straighten a little bit more without locking. See if you want to fold forwards a little bit more. So this is like preparation for warrior three. Or let's say it's a variation of warrior three. Left foot comes to meet the right. Well done. So if you felt it in your hips, buttocks, you're doing it right. Okay, let's lie down, Savasana. I feel Amanda's sending messages through the screen. It's time for Shavasana. Time for Shavasana. Ah. So, Shavasana. If you need to bend the knees to release the lower back, you can do so. Have the heels to the width of your mat. The arms slightly away from the body. Make sure that the shoulder blades are drawing down the back. 
and allow the breath to gently settle. We're going to next bend the knees, place the soles of the feet onto the floor. The feet are in line with the hip bones. Right ankle comes over left knee. Let's draw the left knee in towards you. Take hold of the back of the left thigh. So the right hand comes in between both legs. Shoulders are down, back of the neck long. So if you feel your head's kind of dropping back because your shoulders are lifting, you've got two options. You can either place a pillow underneath the head, or you could practice this pose with the arms down so the back of the neck stays long and drawing the left knee in towards you as you open the right knee without the hands. So you have two options. Flex the ankles to create a little bit more intention. And seeing here if we can breathe in the quality of compassion, self-love. I'm feeling with each exhalation, letting go. And very gently releasing, lowering the foot back down and crossing the leg. And then cross the left ankle over the right knee, draw the right knee thigh in towards you. You've got both options with the hands, either underneath the thigh, ankles flexed, or the hands down on the floor. So see what option works for you without feeling that you're pulling the shoulders up. I'm finding a way to breathe in these qualities of compassion, self-love. Breathing out anything you don't want to hold on to. Sometimes when we're doing poses and we feel a lot of tension building up, if we overdo the pose, we can get a little bit agitated. So find a place where you don't have that sensation and feel that you deepen the pose by gradually drawing further in, in towards you. But not getting to a place where the jaw is clenching and there's rigidity happening in the body. Gently releasing the hand down if they're holding and crossing the leg. And then when you're ready, we'll come on to all fours. And you may want to have a cushion or block handy, uh, a low block or maybe a foam block, not a hard block, or a cushion or a folded blanket. We're going to do pigeon pose. So we may need something underneath one of the hips to keep them level. Now, if you've got any injuries to your knees and this does not feel good, you re can repeat the same pose that we were just doing, lying on the back, okay? So, I'm gonna put a cushion just close by, so you see what I'm doing, especially for those of you that don't practice with me regularly, the rest of you know what to do. So we're on all fours. You have the cushion so you can take hold of it 
and we're going to bring the left knee, we're going to bring it to the outer edge of your left wrist and your foot, I'll just demonstrate on the other side, uh, can, can be near the thigh or for those of you that are more flexible you can bring your foot further up towards the hand but that's quite an intense stretch so just know that if you're not feeling anything you bring the foot up then you slide the other leg back okay so the left knee to the left wrist adjust your front your foot and then you curl the toes under on the back foot lift the back knee slide it back a little bit and if this hips high off the floor you can pop a cushion underneath so that we keep the hips level what we don't want to happen is to roll over onto this side we want to keep the sacrum level okay and then we're going to slowly come forwards onto the forearms again if this doesn't feel good in your knees you do the other variation okay lying down Here, if you felt that you're not feeling a huge amount, you could shuffle your walk, your left foot forwards a little bit. And then if it feels comfortable for you and you want to place the head onto the floor, you could make a pillow with the hands, bringing the elbows out to the side and resting the head. Feel both sides of the trunk are long. The sacrum feels level. Softening to the breath. Softening of any areas of tightness. Very gently start to lift the head, start to press onto the hands and come to a more upright position. So we start kind of leaning forward so the chest is forward. And it's up to you, up to your body, how far you want to walk your hands back towards you. So some of you may want to keep your hands either side of your knee, shoulder width apart or wider. Some of you might be able to walk the hands back alongside the hips and start to get this really sort of deep back bend. So see where it feels comfortable for you. Feel that the chest is lifting, the chin slightly lifting, the shoulders are releasing down. And very gently head back to center walk the hands to wherever is comfortable shoulder width apart if you've got a pillow just slide it out to the side curl the toes under we're going to do a one-legged downward dog ekapada curl the toes under the back foot lift the back knee and slowly draw the left leg up towards the ceiling lengthening through the spine If you want, you can bend the knee, heel towards the left buttock, turn the head, sorry, towards the right buttock, turn the head towards the left armpit. Keep pressing through the hands equally. Slowly extending, lowering the leg back down. Bend the knees. Okay. Then we pop the cushion to the other side if you need a cushion. So there'll be less instruction on this side as we know what we're doing. Now, right knee comes towards the outer edge of the right wrist. Choose your foot position. So either close to the pubic bone or the top of the left thigh. Curl the toes under, lift the back knee. See if you can slide that leg back a little bit. So do that however is comfortable. 
pop a cushion underneath if you need. And then listen to your body. Walk forwards onto the forearms slowly. Find length through the spine. And see if you want to adjust the right foot to maybe walking forwards a little bit more, but don't strain, don't force. And then once you've released in this position, then you may want to make a pillow with the hands or fists and rest the forehead onto the fists or hands. Feel a softening in the breath, keeping the sacrum level. And very gently start to lift the head, come back onto the hands slowly. Start to walk the hands to wherever is comfortable. Be mindful of your knee and gradually start to create a back bend. So you can either have the hands in front of the knee, in line with the knee either side or further back towards the hips. You don't want to feel compression in the spine, but space. Gently lifting the chest, lifting the chin, wherever the hands are. And very slowly, head back. Walk the hands back, they can come either side front of the leg, curl the toes under on the back foot, lift the back knee and come up into Ekapada Adhamukha Svanasana, right leg up, press through the hands equally, bend the knee, heel towards the left buttock, looking towards the right armpit, stacking the right hip on top of the left. And then slowly lowering the leg down, bend the knees, rest into child pose. You can either have the arms in front, the palms up, make a pillow with the hands, fist with the hands, or have the arms alongside the body and relax. And then you can come up to a seated position with the legs at a wide angle out to the side. If you needed a folded blanket underneath your hips, you can do so. You want to draw the flesh back and out on the buttock so you could take hold and roll the skin a little bit without the knees rolling in too much, but just to get that sensation. Okay, we're going to do a little warm up in this position. So have some intention through the heels, lengthening up through the spine. And we're going to walk the hands forwards in front of you slightly till you feel a bit of a juicy stretch. And we're going to bouncy bounce twice. Bouncy bounce over to the side twice behind you twice, back to the leg, twice, centre, twice, other side, 
twice, behind you, twice, you got the movie, keep going, bouncy bounce, gently, not forcing, See if you can remember what leg you started with and we'll finish with the opposite leg. And then back to centre and then coming up. Adjust the sit bones if you need to by drawing the flesh back on the buttocks. And we'll use the fingers behind you, so behind the buttocks, keeping extension through the arms. So we want to feel that we're lifting the front body and from here instead of doing this rounding the head coming down we want to feel like we're trying to lengthen forwards keeping the front of the body long so if there was like a diagonal support for us to literally lie on so if you could visualize like a wall or something we want to feel that we're lengthening onto that while extending through the heels then notice the tendency is to want to round to go further so we want to keep the front corner of the shoulders back get that extension and breathe here feel a stretch to the inner thigh extend through the heels and breathe See if you can continue to breathe in the quality of self-love, compassion, feel with each exhalation you're letting go, the softening of any tightness. and slowly coming back up. We're going to now twist to your right side. Have the hands either side of the leg. Keep extension through the heels. And I'll just add at this point, if you are really struggling here, and this is too much, you, you could have the option to bend the left leg, bring the heel in, so that we're taking out so much of a stretch into the left leg, okay? So if you're struggling in this position, you can do that. Then let's slowly walk the hands towards the foot and you can allow the head to release and relax. But don't force the head down, creating more rounding to the back. We want to have a sense of length and space. And then a softening and a gentle rounding. But getting rid of any idea of that the head needs to reach the shin. More feel that the belly wants to come onto the thigh. And that we keep this sense of space and length. Using the breath as a tool to soften and create space. And then very slowly, you can lift the head, walk the hands back. And we'll go over to the other side. So you've got the same option if you want to, to bend the leg. It's an intense stretch. The hands are either side of the left leg and we start to create the sense of length as we walk over to the left. Notice if there's any difference between one side and the other. Try and soften the shoulders. And the movement is coming from 
the base of the spine even through a gentle activation in the, the left quad to help the hinge from the hip. So feel a sense of softening, but not kind of over rounding, trying to push yourself down. So I often use that straw analogy of a drinking straw that has that little flexy bit to the, the straw and we don't want to sort of just bend it over, we want to lengthen it out and then relax. Keep the shoulders soft, the head relaxed, in tension to the heels. Very slowly lifting the head, walking the hands back. Good. So let's take hold of the back of the knees and bring the legs together. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. You've either got the option to keep the heels away from the bottom or you've got the option to walk the bottom towards the heels. So choose the option that works well for your knees. So if you've got uh, any tension that doesn't feel good in the knees, you may want to stay with the bottom further back. Slightly different stretch, but doesn't matter. Hands behind like we did before, fingertips, using the sense of length to the front of the body and seeing maybe it's literally sitting upright you're already getting a stretch so either staying here in the upright position allowing the knees to open out to the sides if you feel that you can inhale lengthen through the spine and tilt the pelvis forwards a little bit more you can do that and keep working with the breath so as you inhale you feel length through the spine use your fingers to gently help guide you to lengthen and move forwards, even if it's a micro movement. Use the breath, file a so softening to the face, gentle smile. And very gently releasing and coming back up. Take hold of the outsides of the knees, bring the knees together. And then with the knees together, bring the hands slightly behind the hips. Your hands can be whatever way round feels good for you. Everyone's slightly different with their hand position. Ideally fingertips. So see which way, sit nice and tall. Feel that you're lengthening from the base of the spine up through the top of the head and that the shoulders are releasing down and the shoulder blades move down and into the body. So the chest stays open and the belly's drawing in. We're gonna lift the heels up trying to maintain this structure. So hip flexors work, abdominal muscles work. Shoulders back, shoulder blades down and into the body. Good, see if the feet want to lift. Keep the knees bent, thighs moving towards you. So it, it's, it's difficult. So see if you can keep the thighs in towards your chest. So my thighs are almost touching my chest. And then seeing from there, if you can lift the legs up, 
they really feel into <laughs> mum's pulling funny faces okay and gently release down allow yourself to relax now after that effort relax your shoulders relax the head Take a few slow, deep breaths in and out. Good. Slowly lifting the head up, lifting the spine. We're gonna do an inversion. You can choose your inversion. If you've got a uh, shoulder stand practice, you can practice shoulder stand. If you've got headstand practice, headstand, handstand, anything that you like, or there's the option to elevate the legs and have the hips um, supported. So you come into a, a bridge position, lifting the hips up, slide a cushion underneath the sacrum, try and get the arms in as close to the body and lift the legs up. So that is a nice variation for if you don't feel like doing more. And for those of you that want to do a little bit more, you can come into shoulder stands, or putting any blankets underneath your shoulders if you're doing that pose. I'll give a little bit of instruction for those of you that are doing shoulder stand. So we want to make sure in shoulder stand that as we come up, we take time to get the elbows in as close as you can. So to do this, the legs can come almost down to sort of like halasana parallel to the floor and then you can roll the shoulders under a little bit to get the elbows in closer. Fingers interlock, drawing the elbows in. And you can even stay in this position with the hands interlocked, elbows drawing in, squeezing the elbows in as you extend the legs up to the ceiling, feeling that your hips and legs are filled with helium. And then the hands can come up to help assist the back to straighten up a little bit more. Feeling the mid-back's moving towards the face, that the legs are lifting, You're pressing down through the shoulders and the elbows. And there's not too much weight on the hand. And if you want, there's the option to cross one foot over the other doing like a Garudasana lock with the feet to help lengthen up through the legs. And then you can change that cross and do the other foot. And if you've got the cushion underneath, if you've got any tension, just bend the knees in, relax for a moment, then straighten them up again. And release the cross, see if you want to straighten up a bit more. And you hold there for as long as is comfortable. Whenever you want to come down, we bring the legs back down till parallel to the floor, the arms down alongside the body. And then very slowly feeling that you're rolling down, but take your time. If you want to hold for another minute or so, you can do. And as you come down out of shoulder stand, you can feel that you're working the tummy muscles as you slowly lower the legs down to the floor. If you've got the variation of the cushion underneath the hips, you just bend the knees, place the feet back to the floor, push down through the feet, lift the hips, slide the cushion away, 
lower back down. And then we can all do Matsyasana, fish pose together. Unless you want to do Supta Vrajasana, which is the, the kneeling version, sitting onto the heels. So for those of you that know that and like that variation, you can do that. I'll teach fish. So we want to have the hands as close underneath the buttocks as you can get them or to the sides of the thighs. So for those of you that know that you want support, you can pop a cushion under the upper back to support in this position. Legs are together. We sit up halfway, look down towards the feet. Tilt the pelvis forward, so really feel that tilt, pubic bone moves forwards. Then we start to arch back, place the top of the head onto the floor, keeping that lift to the chest, pressing down through the forearms to help lift. Make sure that there's not compression to the neck, so don't drop the head too far back. So you can be at the center of the head or slightly towards the back edge, focusing more on the tilt to the pelvis and the arch to the chest. And the shoulders are releasing down, chest are opening, and breathing into the stretch to the front of the throat. If you don't need your hands where they are, they can rest onto the top of the thighs. See what you want to do with your feet, whether the toes want to point or extend. And then very gently, arms back down to the floor if they're not there. Press down through the elbows, lift the head, lengthen the back of the neck and lower down to the floor. And you can bend the knees, hug the knees in towards you. And we'll take a little twist here. So knees towards you, feet off the floor, arms out to the side, either cactus arms or straight arms. And we're gently keeping the knees and the feet together draw the knees over to the left and release the feet down onto the floor your left hand can take hold of the right thigh or top of the knee and allowing the head to turn to the right ideally we want to have the right shoulder down on the floor so keep that sense of anchoring the right shoulder down Head turns to the right. You have the option here to extend the right leg and take hold of the foot as an option. So the foot comes up towards shoulder height. So see what option works for you today. Bless you. If the top leg's extended, bend it back. Knees, feet together, use the abdominal muscles to come back up. And then let's go over to the other side. Again, using the abdominal muscles to twist you around. So feet, knees together. Once you've gone as far as you can, rest the feet to the floor. So with the right foot to the floor, the side of the foot. Left knee stays on top as much as possible. The left shoulder stays down. Breathing into the twist. Your right hand may want to come onto the knee or the thigh to help release down.
and it may be an option for you to extend the left leg, bringing the foot closer in line with the shoulder, taking hold of the left foot. Keep the left shoulder down. Breath soft. And gently, if the top leg's extended, bend it. Try and bring the knees back together. You can hug the knees in towards the chest, gently feeling the lower back releasing. And as our yoga mudra today, we'll lift the head up towards the knees and you can wrap the hands around the sides of the feet, creating a little ball. Softening the shoulders. And then when you're ready, slowly coming down to a lying down position in Shavasana for Yoga Nidra. Have the feet, have the heels to the width of the mat if that's comfortable for you. The arms away from the body so that the shoulders can relax. The shoulder blades drawing down the back. Draw the awareness to the whole body now. Spread the toes, spread the fingers, lengthen the legs, lengthen the arms, open the mouth, stretch out the tongue, raise the eyebrows and look up. And relax. Let's tense and squeeze all of the body. So making fists, squeezing the legs, squeeze everything, lift a few inches off the floor, squeeze the face and relax. And then let's lengthen one more time. So spread the toes, spread the fingers, the arms, stretch out the tongue, raise the eyebrows and relax. And now feel a softening. Feel the back of the body supported by the ground. And we'll keep up with this theme of breathing in self-love, compassion towards yourself. Feel with each exhalation, you soften and relax physical or mental tension out of the body. Feel the feet and the legs relax. 
the hips, sacrum, and bottom relax. The abdomen, abdominal organs relax. The solar plexus, ribcage, heart and lungs relaxed. The lower back, middle back and upper back relax. Feel the entire spine relaxed and soft. The hands, arms and shoulders relax. The neck jaw and cheeks relax. The nose, eyes, eyelids and temples relax. The forehead, sides, of the head, back of the head and top of the head relax. With the body fully relaxed, bring the awareness back to breathing in this quality of self-love and compassion. If we can't have love and compassion towards ourselves, it's very difficult to share this with other people from an unconditional perspective. So feeling that we're breathing in gently these qualities into ourselves. And feeling with each exhalation that we're softening, letting go of anything we don't want. It sometimes may feel easier in life to show compassion to others and we forget about ourselves. So it's so important to find this compassion towards ourselves so that when we're sharing compassion with others that it comes from an unconditional place. Continue to feel a softening on your exhalation. Start to feel this deep sense of peace inside of yourself. A deep sense of relaxation within.
feel that you're bathing yourself in this sensation of relaxation and peace. Connecting into the deeper aspects of our being through this stillness. Gently drawing the awareness back to the flow of the breath. Feel the softness as the breath moves in and out of the body. A gentleness towards yourself through the breath. Gradually begin to deepen the breath. Maintaining this softness to the breath as it deepens. So there's no strain, but an intention to deepen. And gradually now relaxing the breath and starting to move the body however it feels like it wants to move whether the body wants to stretch out wiggle the fingers and toes and when you're ready Gently, you can roll over to one side, give yourself a hug. Feel this deep sense of self-love and compassion to yourself as you hug yourself.
I'm coming up to sit. Find a comfortable seated position for you with the eyes closed, sense of length through the spine. See where the hands want to rest, whether the palms feel comfortable being up or down, into the lap. Whatever way you're doing, just make sure that we're keeping this openness to the chest. The collarbones feel that they're broadening away from one another. Start to gradually deepen the breath. Again, in this self-loving, gentle way. Feeling that you can deepen the breath. Feel a gentleness within the effort. After your next exhalation, let's relax. Do one round of Kapalabhati, keeping this sense of soften, softening to the practice so that there's the effort of the abdomen pumping in and out and the rest of the body stays still and soft while we maintain a sense of space up through the spine. Exhale fully, inhale partially and begin. Exhale fully, inhale deeply, top of the inhalation, hold the breath. When you need to exhale, exhaling gently with control. Allow the breath to relax. While maintaining this sense of space up through the spine, find a way to soften. Feel that the breath is moving in mindfully with effort, but with this sense of softening. So not creating any rigidity in the body. Sometimes when we work with deepening the breath, tension can arise. So breathing slowly, deeply, mindfully without creating tension.
simply focusing on the breath moving in and out of the body, watching the breath as it moves in and out. Feel that you're breathing into the front, sides, back of the trunk. Feel a softening to the face as we continue with this practice. Start to feel with each inhalation that we bring the awareness back to breathing in this quality of self-love, compassion. And breathing out, letting go. Physical, mental tension. And not denying any thoughts that may arise, just acknowledging them, letting them go. After your next exhalation, relax the breath. Feel a softening in your entire being. A gentleness. Gentle smile to the face. Inhaling for Om. Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu 
Loka sanasta sukhino bhavantu Loka sanasta sukhino bhavantu May the entire creation be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Beautiful.